Here on the dialog, we have a little screenwriting exercise we've set up for you guys called The Object. Frederick, can I grab that tray? Are you prepared to pay us thousands? <laughs> yeah, we're going <laughs> okay, to wire it into escrow in a uh, Swiss bank account. This is account. Frederick. This is Frederick. He's brought... Oh, uh, Frederick's been with us for years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Frederick's married we to couldn't, Rose. We couldn't, <laughs> we couldn't do without him. <laughs> yes. Frederick's uh, patiently waiting to reveal an object to you. Uh, it's picked by random... Frederick has no lines? Frederick has no lines. He's MOS. Uh, no, no, no. Frederick should talk like Eric Bloor. <laughs> Oh, I do, said I do. Oh, Thank you. There you go. There you I, go. See? I didn't get that reference. That's a good tip off. That's a 70 year old reference. Do you remember Eric Bloor? They took him and put him in Dudley Do Right. Hey, but it's Dennis Van Wick here. What I, yes, love, uh, what I love about this is you've turned Frederick into the object. You don't, don't even know. need to go Frederick to an object. Is, because this is called comedy. A new character enters the scene. Absolutely. And he should have a comic attitude, which he doesn't. <laughs> so, Frederick. As Gary used to say, you should enter with an axe. With an axe. This is con yes. yes. Not, not with sandwiches. There's nothing fudge. It's, the housewife enters from the kitchen, comes into the dining room carrying an not axe. Fun. Now the scene now it's funny. funny. Yes. Yeah. Well, I better get to that object before we run away. Yes. Reveal the object is to the guys. Yeah. Is it John the Baptist? <laughs> yes. Yeah. It is your object. So yeah, you have to now make up a story on the spot uh, between the two of you and tell me what it is and then I'll ask you why you picked this particular story. Do we story. have to tell you what this is? No, what is no. this? What are we, Columbo? <laughs> I think any idiot knows what this is. <laughs> no, give me a story about it's, it. It's, 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 it's... See, see, now where I would go, I, I, I'm, I'm It's a why. hash pipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's the where end. he would go. Yes. <laughs> okay. But interesting. That's, that's his background. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Go ahead. Dad, you tell the story. My background is I would go this because my my mom. This is where I would go for okay. smoke. This is what makes me think she was my an, mom. Yes, she was a pipe smoker. She, she was a Cherokee. Yes. We yes. Were, oh, like, yes. Yes. Feet to yes. It. yes. <laughs> but but my dad smoked cigars. We lived in a very very small apartment, and he smoked cigars, and he loved cigars. He loved them. And our apartment, because they weren't expensive cigars, folks. I mean, this is how we grew up. She, at, at one point when I was a kid, to, to try to please my mom, he switched from cigars to a pipe. To affect that British look. Yes. In Queens. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. with, with the pants open. Right. And well, here comes Lord Gans. <laughs> Well, it was Queen. Because she would, she would, the, 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 the stink would, would, would perhaps be, be less offensive. So I just, I always remember this kind of odd, and it only went on for like about a year, and then he went, went back to the cigars again. But it's like this, it's, it's like, I hadn't thought of it in years, but when I, that I saw that, I, I just got this kind of odd, you know, strangely wrong image of my, that pipe smoking, it just felt, but uh, that's, I mean. In, in your writing, do you, I mean, do objects or any, do th things that would recall or make you recall stories or anecdotes like that, do they ever find it, its way into? Well, I'll tell you an anecdote that I okay. just learned last week. Okay. And it's related to smoking and a pipe and, and but okay. it, I'll, I'll jeep, it's funny. Okay. My, my younger brother, my mom, I lived in the Bronx, found a, a bag of grass that he had. He was younger, he was about five years younger. She was hysterical. Marijuana. marijuana. <laughs> she didn't know what to do with it. We lived in an apartment building in New York. She was afraid to throw it down the incinerator because she didn't want to get the building high. <laughs> <laughs> Strangely makes sense, but yeah. And she just told me this story. But, but this is, I, I, I cannot tell you how much, I mean, it, it, in TV, I would we always preach this stuff, bring your lives into work with you. Bring your lives into work. And, and it's always, if, if you great. type, here's, I will here's, always go to, to, to my, Parents, my child, something on, on here's, any here's object. The thing about, with, with, I, I don't mean ageism. Or, or I find that a lot of people who are writing now, they're writing from life off the screen as opposed to it's what, already what they're been, looking at. It's already been it's so interpreted second by another writer. Right. Yeah. It, instead of going actually. Look around. Yeah. Yeah. It might even be third generation, too, because I, I know people that are writing off TV which is exactly. off the screen, which is off. Oh, and, and it can't, yeah. we, we, we mentioned earlier that we, we had spent a year, right, watching every a afternoon at, at lunch in our office an episode of the Dick Van Dyke Show. And I can honestly say I found at least three lines from the Dick Van Dyke Show that had lodged in my mind when I was 13 or 14 years old that in some form 
had had shown up 30 years later right. in one of our we screenplays, not stealing, just it, it, it was natural. Just, so so yeah. you, you can't help being influenced somehow. But, but I can get more specific. There's a scene where Rob and Laura go to school for, for Richie, and it has a parenthood. You know when Steve had to go to, they, when Steve and Mary Steenburgen had to go to school, and yeah. it had that same vibe, and you go, yes, this, I said, this I, lodged. I know, I know that, that when we were writing this scene, somehow we, it, it, was, it was just in there. So it just gets into your consciousness. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And it was, that was the scene, wasn't he talking about birth, facts of life to other kids? Yes, and, yes. And you go, yeah, yeah. and then they had a call because their son Kevin had, a, and you go, so, yeah, but for something like this, we will just, just about Fred always go to. Back and, <laughs> and, and just can know. we get a brandy, Frederick? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Frederick's not home. Yeah. <laughs> Good hours. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have rules for, for things like pacing and structure and dialogue, or is it, uh, again, all part of that process of just kind of verbalizing stuff back and forth? No, because we're just turning in a script that's 132 pages. It's way too long. Way too long. Way too long. Way too long. Just, uh, don't be boring. How long should a screenplay be? Well, we've written some that shouldn't be more than no pages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, uh, 100, 110, 110. Yeah. yeah, something. I mean, we, you know, we, our, our, our screenplays are dialogue heavy. and you we're, can, we're so the we kings can, we of can, the first act. Right. You can, you can, uh, we could probably write 125 pages and it wouldn't be too long a movie. When you say kings of the first act, can you elaborate on that? We, we, you know, there's subtext to an actor. We write the subtext. We create the world. We know, splash, what page does a mermaid come in? I'll deep into them. But the, the first drafts, our first drafts, the first act, the premise, the, the introductory act is always much longer than anybody else's. Cattle drive, when do they get to the cattle drive? I mean, you want to know we, their we, life. We what? never rush into the premise. Um, and, and sometimes even it has stayed on the screen. It's not just an exercise, you know, we'll now cut it in half. People read it at first, they go, this many minutes till the mermaid appears in the movie, this many minutes till the guys go on the cattle drive, this many minutes till, you know, whatever it is. And they're shocked at first, but. But the smart, here's, here's where we're kind of clever. That first scene, the intro, we put in the Little Mermaid. She's coming, folks. Be patient. Yeah, Cute but we little... did it specifically because we knew that the mermaid doesn't minutes. actually appear in the movie for 30, 40 minutes. So he went, wait a minute. We better let the audience know they haven't wandered into the wrong theater. Plus, you got double uh, whammy out of that because that's another great example of setup and payoff. Really. Yeah, yeah. Like, absolutely. And then yeah. running Set the from, tone for running the, from yeah. the bulls. Oh, okay, there's fun. There will be fun. Yes, because we weren't going to put them on a cattle drive for so long. He said, you know, throw, throw them, give, give the audience a present. Give them a big, funny... And there are scene. animals. And say, okay, okay now, now relax. We'll, we'll, you know, you know we can be funny, <laughs> okay? We, we'll, we'll get you there. Uh, so you probably, you, you don't embellish things like writing descriptive action or that kind of stuff. You more Very little. Right, dialogue. Characters. Yeah. Do you have rules of pacing for how to balance humor with, with pathos or drama? No, I, in fact. Do you? Because we'll we'll, yeah, we'll, take we'll, notes. we'll use it. <laughs> the, the, I, I I have rules for nothing. No. <laughs> one of one of the one of the flags that we fly is that even if it's interspersed with scenes that have no laughs in them whatsoever, when we do have a scene that is funny, it can be as funny as the scenes in movies that are all funny. We, we don't actually feel that we have to uh, tippy toe go, it's a different kind of movie. We can't get that, we can't be that aggressive. When it's in the same scene, that's I love. When he, he was, I think it was you. Parenthood. Par well, I was also thinking of one in League, but Parenthood's a, maybe even a better oh, example. But League, with, 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 yeah. League, do you do this scene? where the girl says goodbye to her dad at the train she's station. She's fearful of leaving. She's a girl who lived in the gymnasium with her dad. And Penny Wallace. shot the hell out of it, and it scored, sweeping, you know, big goodbye dad and the American flags fly in the background. And, you know, most, I think, right, would just let that scene go, you know. And he wrote at the end of the scene, John Lovitz comes off the train and says, uh, see how it works is the train moves, not the station. You know, he's-, he's Audience he's, is caught off guard. They're Bam. so off guard, they laugh twice as big as the joke deserves, you know. And, and the one he was talking is parented, they do this almost a climactic scene in a movie where, where Mary is sick of Steve's sort of introspection 
and 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 his dwelling and points out his. This is right after the, the, the old lady. This is the, the roller coaster scene. Yeah, and he's he's done what we what we always try to do. We always try to comment. The, the, the old lady does the uh, does the roller coaster metaphor, and we can't let a metaphor just go because that's too writerish. So Steve says, "Oh, I see what's supposed to happen here." My, my grandmother tells me this charming metaphor about a roller coaster and that's supposed to make, you know, make everything okay. And she throws something and she's, at him. She's, now she's really pissed off at him because he's just crapping on their, on their lives. And she says, your, your grandmother is brilliant. And she's in tears. And she's a wonderful actress. And, and, and Steve looks out the window and says, if she's so brilliant, why is she sitting in a neighbor's car? Which, you know, if you just wrote that joke as part of a scene that had jokes in it, you'd go, that's a medium. Right. You know, but the audience is kind of so looking this way, boom, you know, it's the, the boxes always say it's the punch you don't see that knocks you out. And did you know you were going to have the payoff of the, no. of the roller coaster sound effect? Oh, the sound there? effect, no, that was yeah, Ron's right. idea. Oh, that's Ron. That was Ron's idea. When, and when, in fact, when Ron pitched it to us, we went, ooh, heavy hands a little. He said, well, I'll shoot it both ways. I'll shoot it one way. This is a reasonable guy. <laughs> oh, Ron's a beauty. He's an angel. I mean, you know, he just... Uh, 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 Until he won that thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, in fact, in fact, sarcastically, ironically, I, I often refer to Ron as the evil genius. <laughs> just because it, it's so... The phrase is so ill-suited right. uh, to him. Uh, so did, he, did it screen both ways, or did it screen once with the sound effect? He screened it, it with the sound yeah. effect, and it, it was clearly so effective. Absolutely. He was so obviously right that you just went, you said, you know, beauty, uh, good, nice going. I feel like you guys invented the fish out of water genre because I heard the term a lot after your initial movies, <laughs> City Slickers and, and Splash, which is a literal one, and Gung Ho. Had you, were you familiar with that phrase before, or did you, did you invent the format, or what about that format appeals to you? Because <laughs> I feel like it just, it really well, became... came to you when they say talkies, and I said, that's pretty good. <laughs> so, um, we take credit for that. Uh, 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 Bill Cosby once said, have you ever seen a fish out of water? It's not that funny. It's pretty disgusting, flapping around and everything. Uh, I, is it an know. accident? Is it just kind you of? You know, I, I, we didn't even. Ironically, we don't even look at Splash as a fish out of water movie. <laughs> I mean, is it that peculiar? Because the the comedy is is not really so much based right on, on her the, being on, out. It's really on, about him getting yes. into a love affair. We look yes, at it, we it, we take it from John Candy's point of view. You know what? That's yes. the, that's who makes us laugh. Yeah, you know, it, it was as Babalu alluded to earlier. Virtually every movie we we do is um, some version of who are we in this movie. Did you research penthouse letters for the classic lesbian no more? A lesbian no more. <laughs> no, I, I mean, that was, that just came from, you know, that time in your life as a young uh, fella that you that whenever your friends have your know, playboys and penthouses in your basement, those friends of yours who actually had basements as opposed to apartments, so, you know, you'd read this stuff and your first, actually when you're like 15 is, Wow, these things are actually happening to people. You don't actually get that there's a guy, you know. So we just just thought it was wonderful that this guy, you know, just that was kind of. Kind he was of, so excited. That it was kind of a dream. Look, 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 look at him. Film. But look at him. You go look at this Lothario. Yes, <laughs> they wrote. Um, the you know every once in a while you find somebody who is a who is a comedy dream come true. Like like John Candy, I will never forget in in the racquetball scene. It was obviously set up so that he would shoot it, and then he would get hit in the head with the ball from another angle because you can't. It's physically impossible to do it. So the idea was for him to serve it and get as close as possible. So then when you did the turnaround, and somebody threw the ball right at his forehead, he'd go down. Well, first time out of the thing, he actually hits himself in the head. Okay, that's just luck, but here's the beauty. Here's a real comedy animal. He doesn't stop and like look at everybody and go, hey, look look what happened. As soon as it hit him in the head, instinctively, he went down like a sack of shit, bang, to the floor, knowing we've got something here. It can now play in one cut. And even though it wasn't designed to play in one cut, it plays that way wow. because it was so, but, but if he had not, 
instinctively just followed through on it, it you know, and you, that's, that's a split second realization. That's amazing. Split second realization that he had found comedy. Now they put the ball in CGI, it wouldn't be. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but you, you know, as as a as a comedy writer, you, you just, I mean, we literally we, we fall in love with guys like that. Uh, it, it's, you know, it, it's just it's it's just a treasure. We talked about um, influences. Do you ever draw on past movies like uh, oh, Diamond and, and Billy Wilder? And those well, it, there's a picture on our desk of, of Lowell and I when we had lunch one day with Billy Wilder. We keep a picture keep of the three right of us between right us. between us. Right between us. Are there other favorites uh, on that order that you refer to or that you draw? Those from? are the gods. Those are the gods. Wilder, and I'm sure I, I know. You know, everybody in the last 25 years has been very influenced by Woody Allen. You know, I mean, he, he kind of reinvented the romantic comedy. There's a, there's a different way that male and female characters speak to each other on screen, even if you're not aware of it. It, it just, it, it really, uh, it, it's, you don't even have to specifically access it. It's, it's just yeah. the air in the room when you're writing comedy has changed. Yeah, he tapped into the, or airing out of the anxieties of it. Yeah, you know, and yeah. The less romanticism. It, right. Yeah, so I mean, that, that's, that's clearly, a, you know, a, a powerful influence. And any affection for Lubitsch or Hawks or Sturges? Howard? Um, yeah, um, uh, well, and of course, Lubitsch comes through Wilder, Absolutely. second generation, you know, to be influenced by Wilders, to be influenced by Lubitsch. Right. Um, the Hawks, we, somebody used to say of us, they don't so much anymore, I think because they just don't remember anymore, everybody's too young to remember that our, our stuff like, our early, early, early stuff like Night Shift and Splash, they would say, it, you're, it sounds a little 40s, and I, and I always felt like they mean Hawks. Yes. When, when they're saying that this this kind of, it's slightly his stylized. His Girl Friday? Are we saying His Girl Friday? Yeah, that's yeah. a pretty good compliment. Yeah. That's oh, pretty well, right. We always took it as a compliment that it, that it has, that it, you know, it's kind of how people talk, but just just nudged a little a, a little up, you know? And, and, uh, and he said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we were influenced stylistically by that. What's each of your favorite bit that the others come up with? Like, what's your favorite of his and what's your favorite of his? I, I've kind of said it. When, when, when we have that, I would get so into a scene, like an actor when we're writing it, that it, it would be, it, sometimes it's really hard for me to then smack the joke on it. I'm, I'm too kind of lost. And, and he's just, he's with me every second writing the scene, but somehow sometimes th I'm, there's I'm this the audience. space yeah, that he just keeps himself, where, where then he can just, finish the scene, like with what she's doing in Neighbor's Car, how the train moves and not the station, that I'm always kind of just so delighted when it happens. I'll just be sitting there writing, and I'll go, oh, yes, <laughs> you know, bang. It, 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 so those are kind of my, those are my favorites. What's the most irritating habit of, of either of yours that gets on each other's nerves? Or I don't do think you, we, do we? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Listen, we've been blessed in life with two good marriages, you know? Right, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. there's like, I got 30, like 31 years out there and uh, 25 over here. In the so, office, yeah. So I, I, I always say every writing team breaks up for different reasons, but at the bottom line, I always say when I listen to their stories, it's he didn't fully appreciate how brilliant everything I was saying was. Right. And um, I don't know, we've just, Always, maybe because we got it beat out of us in TV. I don't know, but we we we've never felt insulted by the fact that something we said didn't get in the script. That that we pitched something one to the other. No, we know it's a and long we, process, and it's we kept two years. going. It's constant work. There's. But it's like if he, if I'll pitch something, he doesn't have to say, "Don't write that down." There's just a, 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 a palpable feeling in the room that that wasn't it, mm -hmm. that that didn't that didn't get it done, and and or and it didn't kick off something else. Yeah, it, it was a dead end, or it'll sit there for a moment, and you know it's a, 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 a verbal cul-de-sac, you know, as we say, and and so I, there's never this kind of you don't think that's funny. No friction, in other words. You know, I mm -hmm. we've never I you know. You just move on, come up, do something else. 
has the business changed much, or can you can you has the process of screenwriting or the business side of the whole thing you know evolved or changed much since when you started out? One thing, everybody I've ever talked to of any age, our age, younger or older, feels that the days that they were first making their big successes was the best days in Hollywood in general. Right. That that was the way, that was the time that the system worked at its best and made the most sense. Right. And nobody quite gets that that's completely subjective. <laughs> that it's completely based on, you know, your it's like every personal satisfaction. Complaining about the other's music or something. Yes, it's very much the same thing. Oh, music stinks now, you know. Um, yes, it, it changed. I mean, uh, wiser people than us have pointed this out that, you know, we're in a. We had movies in the 90s that came out in the summer that were not blockbusters and were not supposed to be sleeper hits. Movies that, did, that had no ballyhoo opened in June, July, and August, made $100 million when tickets were half as expensive as they are now, stayed in the theater for months. And, you know, we're up against, you know, Batman and Star Trek and all that. And that's largely unheard of now. Now, maybe there's like one movie every two summers that actually does that. Uh, so what am I saying? That we're great and no one else is? Of course not. That's, you know, the, the, the in that sense, the business, did, objectively speaking, the business accommodated more different possibilities in more different ways than it seems to be doing the last few years. They're just the very fact that we would open a, a movie and its opening weekend would be six or nine or twelve million dollars in the summer and it would you finish over a hundred. You do it now you're dead. The theory is now what is it three times opening weekend is pretty much what you Yeah, gross. we opened we opened a movie last year that not in the summer, not under you know huge daunting competition. What did it open? Eleven? No, is that fever pitch? Fever, fever pitch. pitch. Opened eleven and there was immense depression because even though the audience research was very high. The reviews were terrific. I said, 11, you're dead. If The fact that people, that there's good word of mouth, you might get up to 40. So and the, that's, that's, in fact, that's in fact what happened, because it only opened 11. The chances for a studio to just support a picture or let it play. Well, it's not this. that, you know, people are so hip now. You know, we first, you know, let everybody go, knows. Oh, it's not a, it's not a successful movie. Everybody knows what everything's earned they just, Saturday they, they, morning. They just, you know, money was in all the papers that it had not been a successful, so you get this it had been a mediocre opening. People just look at the box office list and go, oh, I'm not going to go see the th number three picture, the number right. four yeah, picture. Yeah, very much so. And, and uh, you know, and, and also there's, you know, there's four more movies coming out the next week two in your genre right. you know which is fine I'm, I'm not complaining that, that there's a lot of work going but it has on an that, effect yeah. yeah it's just a fact so uh, you know and they're much more they care much more now about children's dollars than they used to and much more about foreign dollars that, than they used to and for people like us who write kind of very um, um, I would say we write, you know, very quirky American no. movies. Our movies have a very specific kind of. What's been the most successful international grossing movie of yours? We've never had a successful. No. International tell tell movie. them the, the the Parenthood story and that uh, when they were City Slickers in France. The City Slickers. Was, yes, Parenthood. This is, this this is, is why a, we don't do I mean, well. It's a secondhand story. If if you if you haven't seen Parenthood, this movie will make no sense. But if you have. Ron was doing a press conference in Paris where they were, they were opening the movie after it had been a very big hit in America. And, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, French uh, thing, forgive my horrible uh, burlesque French accent, but he, he, he said, uh, uh, this uh, little boy who is so nervous all the time, uh, why don't they tell him to stop that? <laughs> and Ron said, I knew we weren't going to be it. They, you know, it's, it's, we, we, we write about the American culture uh, you know it, it's uh, yeah, so infidelity is funny in france where here you can't get much traction <laughs> yeah <laughs> the yeah, styles of comedy are very yeah different. yeah so you know it's uh, it's we we've you know we've we've never had a really our eye on that ball and, and you know and then when we when we pitch a movie like fever pitch they you know so it goes oh my god we love this but we have to get over the fact that we're going to get nothing out of it Right. So how's, we have the double whammy, I guess, of baseball and being an yes. American comedy. Yeah, yeah. Do you think, you mentioned ageism before, but do you think it exists with screenwriters in Hollywood? 
How many people do you actually know? Our age, started out or where we start out with, it was still working. We're, 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 you know, we're, we're, we're a miracle. I, I, and, and even for us, I can't say what meetings take place all over town in which our names are mentioned and somebody says, aren't they a thousand? You know, I, I can't even tell, but you know, we, as, as he said, we're, we're, the, we're, we're not part of a huge club. Right. What types of input do you guys get throughout the process in terms of either studio notes or, or do, you go to, do you get friends and family to read stuff along the way? Or do you just kind of kick it, keep it between yourselves? And I wish we had friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not eager for anybody who doesn't have to to read our material. I'm not even happy to hear that friends have gone to see the movie after it comes out. I don't, I don't want to hear what anybody thought or so you've never you never had to deal with uh, a, a preponderance of studio notes or oh yeah notes? sure but they that I we have to hear they paid you know they bought it <laughs> you know they're, they're buying the words but if if we could get the notes digested through a producer or a director so much the better I don't want to go in and argue about it if 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 we don't have to I, I like I say I prefer if, if nobody read it. These days you see so many comedy scripts, I mean scripts in general, but a lot of movies, uh, comedies and, and whatnot with four or more writers. Do you think, is that a recent phenomenon? And Do you think it, it's ever a good thing or a bad thing? Or? Well, I mean, way back at the beginning of this, we alluded to this sort of uh, secret work we do. So we've been among those. We have definitely been among those. The, the only difference is we never ask for credit. We never arbitrate credit on a movie that's not ours completely from start to finish. Um, then you hear a little whoopee from somebody else because there's a... Yeah, somebody who's been completely rewritten gets credit that they badly want, so we're happy to... And what's your uh, thinking behind that, that, that decision? We just like to keep the two careers separate. You know, it, it's, we, we... It's those this... are, they are mishmashes, even if they're good, even if the movies are good and successful, it does represent a, a collaboration with people we've never met. And so um, I, I, we just don't see that as, as a reflection of, of, of what we do, or at least what we strive to do. Have you ever had a, a really big argument with, with executives or anyone about what's funny? Because fun, funny is so subjective. Like, have you ever had a big debate or argument about something you knew you wanted in a movie and something, some, something somebody was demanding it be taken out? No, I mean, what you try to do is if, if your tastes are so dissimilar, you, you just try to remember never to work with them. Again, Gary Marshall used to tell a, a superb little sort of philosophy about that. Say there were, there were two arguments you could have as a writer, let's say, with a director about comedy. Um, one is you're looking at it and, 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 the, the, and you say, gee, that's not funny. And the director says, yeah, I know. Why isn't it? And then you get into an argument about why. So that's good. So the horrible kind of is you go, um, gee, that's not funny. And the director says, yes, it is. And, and Gary say, at that point, just swallow poison. You're, you're, you're destroyed. There's, there's, you know, it, it's... So as we're the first ones to cut and say, that's not funny. Yeah, so we actually fear more somebody saying something is funny when it isn't. When a scene or something it, it has, it, is not funny and they think it is, that, that's much more of a nightmare than somebody saying to us, cut it, and we have to go, gee, I really think that that's good. All right, well, it'll... it'll We'll put it in another movie someday, maybe, you know. Uh, we, we don't get... No. We don't because get dramatic. You're we gonna don't screen get dramatic. It. You're going to screen it a couple of times. If that's that same lack of response, got to go. You know, it's very much the school of if three people say you're sick, lie down. <laughs> you know, I, I used to really, in TV, get irritated. A writer would have a joke, and you'd go to the Tuesday run-through, and it would die. And would say, well, it died because it was staged wrong. And you go, okay, well, let's stage it right Wednesday. And you go, okay, this time... He moved this, on the this line. This time he moved on the line. You'd go, two, this is two strikes. I'm not, I'm not getting all the way to Friday, and you're still telling me that it could have worked if it, that we're getting a new joke in there. You know, I, I just don't believe in, in, in playing those games with yourself about, you know, uh, it really is funny, and, and, and someday... When it's when it's on TV, a, a, no, a new generation will know it's funny. I, it, it, no, it has to be funny now. 
among all your work, uh, what's been the most gratifying? Why is it always about our work? Can we talk about the <laughs> subject? <laughs> all right, go ahead. Um, it's hard uh, narrowing it down, but what's been the most gratifying experience as writers? Well, I, I alluded before to you know, the, the first test screening of Night Shift that you just sat there in an audience. You know, and they fill the place for those screenings because it's free. Right. But I don't know how many hundreds of people, and you get to these jokes, and they all just, everybody just starts laughing. Like, with, with energy. You know, just look at the people in front of you, and their heads are bobbing up and down, and you, and you just go, holy crap, we did that. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of it's awesome. And then for me, I'll tell you, fever pitch. I, I enjoyed watching it because I'm like, we've done this 25 years and there's just, this is fresh, it's energetic, it's insightful, it doesn't feel like two weary guys wrote this. Those characters. They, yes, I, I would tell you, at, at, the, at a screening of Fever Pitch afterwards, I, 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 I hugged Babalu and it's the only time in 25 years we've ever made physical contact. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite a build up. Yeah. <laughs> And Did because, you take a weekend for that? <laughs> no, because I, I actually, I actually felt. I, I mean, you know, I'm getting, getting older. I'm getting emotional. I'm getting sentimental. Something, but, but you just. Well, that's interesting. You pick, you picked kind of the first for all the reasons that that was special because right. it was the first and the, and the most recent one because you, you saw that. Nothing and it was 25 years. It was kind of a milestone. Hmm, you right. were saying, oh, gee, we're actually doing this together. Is that a silver anniversary. Yeah, hmm. all this yes. time. And uh, bought me nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and he got me that nice TV guide. I got that TV guide. Yeah, that was that was. No, no, it, I, I, it was fever pitch. I asked. I have six kids, and I asked them, and then they were honest, and fresh, real. That's that's a couple up there. That's not peep too too middle aged. Trying to write that couple. Well, this has been great. We want to thank today's subjects, uh, Lol Gans and Bob Lumen. Subjects? Lumen. What is they going to be <laughs> testing on us? We ended on no laugh. I ended way down here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll do it over. We want to thank today's right, esteemed, esteemed, yeah, uh, screenwriters, Lol Gans and Bob Mandel for being here, and thank you as well for watching. Thank you. It was, it was a pleasure, <laughs> yeah. truly. Please check out the other great interviews in this uh, series with industry pros, and remember, it all starts with you. The next written by credit could be yours. I'm Mike DeLuca. <laughs>